Hey, welcome back to Soda Time Restoration. Mark Cohen here. We're back on the Vendo 56. Got it back from all the strip down. Had a epoxy primer put on before I got it. And basically we've went through everything on the epoxy. Anything that we've done a little bit of body work, we're at the block out stage right now. I've put a light coat of uh, kind of a flat black on there just to kind of give me a guide coat on sanding, but uh, 220, I tried to start with, uh, I'm gonna go down to 180. We're gonna start with 180 tonight. Make sure you put some kind of epoxy uh, primer down on that bare metal after you've had it stripped all the way down. Martin Senior does have in their finish line, they do have a 2K that is DTM. That'd be a direct to metal uh, product that you can spray on now. This one here is true epoxy finish, so uh, uh, probably uh, I'd say both of them, as long as they say direct to metal, DTM, uh, they'll be fine. Gives you a little bit of an idea, surface-wise, your highs and lows. If you're in an enclosed room, I strongly suggest using a mask. What you're going to be looking for is, as you're sanding, you're wanting to get all that that dark, your, your guide coat, you want to get it sanded all the way out. If you get that blocked out, you know you're pretty smooth, especially with a block. I'm using a six inch block here. When you get to uh, some of the second, the second stage of blocking where you need to do a little bit of final, I use a soft pad. I use a stick of paper on it. Comes in a roll, just stick it on. If you're if you're doing that by hand, you got your, a chance of your fingers pushing down on it. So a pad gives you that little bit of a cushion. Obviously, it's not as stiff as a flat block would be, but in these tighter areas, it works a little bit better, especially around the lettering. You got a gray scotch bright pad. If you got a red one, I think it'd be fine, especially if you're gonna put another coat on. But take that scotch bright pad and try to double it up. Don't put down just your, sometimes you can do one finger like this in there. I like to double it up just to give it a little more cushion and then work your, your letters this way. Remember, everything on that original coating needs to be scuffed before that sealer goes on or you're gonna have some adhesion issues Your blocking stage kind of give you an idea where areas that needs to be sanded more see a little bit of sanded not sanded areas like that same thing right here I see a little bit of a dent now that's gonna have to be fixed missed that one earlier I, I have done a, a previous body work to this flat missed uh, a couple areas here so these are things that jump out there that you need to pay attention to the little Little spot right there. Uh, that's not very much. That can probably be sanded out. I can sand that out, but that dent's still going to be there. That has to be filled. Uh, we'll probably retap that from the back side and then do a little filler on that. But everything else looks pretty good. You want your lettering. You can see these shiny areas. We want to get those totally scuffed really good. Tough to get in there. Just one of those areas that you just got to work on. We had just did a second block, still using the 180 grit. We're gonna do a couple of repairs. Been using this glaze on this project. It's uh, called the Pro Gold. It's a 24 ounce bottle, part number is 1012, uh, but it comes out very smooth. I wouldn't use this if you're doing the first shot. I would use regular body filler on that, but get you some of this product. It's kind of a, a glaze. That's what it would, needs to be used for. It's kind of a glaze. Go over some, a uh, little bit of a body work. 
Got some little nicks, but uh, show you how this goes on. Not gonna take much. We're just gonna have a little, couple little spots here we're gonna do. Everything else out, actually blocked out pretty nicely. Put you a little bit down. It uses a hardener. And I've had somebody ask, it, are you using the red or the blue? Uh, don't use the, the red anymore. I've always used blue in the last four or five years, but I always put about a ribbon. So whatever size you've got right here, uh, if it's extremely hot day, that could set up kind of quickly. Mix that in really good. And I kind of like pressing it in. I kind of flip it and then press that body work in. About like that, it's ready to go. You can see all your color consistency. And we're just gonna hit some spots that I see need a little bit of attention. Not gonna take much. Like I said, this will set up pretty quickly. So if you're seeing any other little nicks, like that one right there, sanded out pretty good. A little spot right there. And most of that's gonna get sanded off. Some people say, well, I just can't get it on smooth. Hey, you're gonna be blocking most of that out. And right there, that shows you how quick that just set up. See, it won't, it won't spread anymore. That's how quick it sets up. That's kind of what you want. Obviously, if I was doing a bigger area, I wouldn't have wanted to set up that fast, but uh, once you get it down, it sets up that quick. That part number is a 24OZ1012. That is the actual part number. Uh, Martin Senior, Nap Auto Parts. Sherwin Williams probably got the same products, uh, but uh, I, it really, it sands really nice. I'd say probably within 30, 40 minutes, this would probably be ready to sand. Hey, welcome back to Soda Time Restoration. Mark Cohen here. When I do a surface clean wipe down, I'll blow everything off. I'm using the PB1001 uh, Pro Base Surface Cleaner just to get any contaminants off. I always put a sock on. We're just shooting 2K, it's not like clear coat, but I always tend to put a sock on, just keeps it out of your, out of your hair, ears. And then I use a, I'm using my, the 3M, uh, I call it disposable mask, 07192. So we'll go to the mixing of the product. It's four to one ratio. In a four to one ratio, if you don't know what that means, that is how much primer and how much hardener you're gonna be using. So on the finish one product, if you look on the label, it'll show four to one. That means four parts of the primer and one part of the FH411. So on your scale on the side, you're gonna actually see if this is in backwards, but four one to one. So you want that first scale coming up and you're looking, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna pour up to four. We're only gonna put up about, about a half a cup in. So we're gonna pour our primer up to four, and then we're gonna pour up to the next four for the hardener. If we had a reducer to put in, it would be in the last scale, it would go the next four. We're not doing that, we're just doing the four one. Four and then the, the one part. So that gives you a four one ratio. If you got a mixing cup, just make sure everything is equal parts so if you're going to put four of the primer in if you're going to put four ounces or four pints or four quarts that means you're going to do the same ratio with your hardener which only would be one of that same part so if you did four ounces you're only going to be putting one ounce of that in if you did four pints you'd be putting one pint of this in we'll get this stirred up make sure when you're stirring this product uh, shake it if you can. If you got a shaker, great. If not, get in there and stir it really, really good. You don't want to feel anything on the bottom dragging it off. If you do, keep stirring it until that's gone. 
So we're going to go up to this four. And now we're going to put the hardener in. And it's the FH411 that goes with this product. And we're going to pour up to one, one marking. So we're going to go to that four right there. And we're right there. Stir that really good. And remember, this is a PPS system, 3M. 3M has not given me anything free. Just what I've been using. If you're just using a regular mixing bowl, I get it, and a regular spray gun. Uh, it is a little expensive to get into PPS, but man, the cleanup time's in half. That's stirred up real good. So the lid that you put on has a screen. So when you pop that on, you, all your product is going to be screened, and it's a very fine, I think they call, this is like a 2.0 system here. Uh, can't tell you what micron it is, but very, very tight. We're going to try to reuse this one that we just shot with. They give you some of these plugs, so when you do take that off, you can stick that plug in there, turn it upside down, you don't lose any of your, any of your product, or... If you don't want anything, any air to get into, the, you can cap this off and save it for a while. Obviously, every product has a time frame that it, but it does keep air from getting in there. And now we're ready to screw the gun onto it. We are ready to shoot a little primer. I think it says probably needs four. Depends on the temperature, four to six hours before you do any uh, sanding. So it'll be the next day before I get back on it. All right, here we go. All right, the last two coats that went on. Looks really good. Uh, make sure save your mask there is a bag that it comes with stick it in that baggie seal it back up if you got an old coffee can stick it in that coffee can seal it up as tight as you can get it, it is a ziploc system uh, there's a reason why they they do it this way keep it obviously clean uh, try to keep it as airtight as possible so you get some longevity out of here but check the 3m site i don't want to tell you hours because i have no idea but uh Probably, personally, in a body shop, uh, I'm seeing these guys change them, these things out, if not every week, every two weeks. Just depends on how much they're using it. I always stick it back in the original bag. And like I say, if you got a coffee can, that's just a little added, added protection. It keeps that air from getting to the dual charcoal filter. If you see somebody hanging one of these up on the wall in the body shop, in the paint booth, uh, it's pretty well done by the next day. There's only so much air time that that charcoal can handle. It really needs to be resealed back up. Clean up on the gun. One of the reasons I like PPS, literally you're gonna take the can off just like that. I use an aerosol gun cleaner. The particular one that we're using tonight is uh, called Naked Gun. Uh, they do make a, a fast line series. Both of them work pretty good. The fast line, I think, cuts probably a little quicker. Literally, you're going to just spray into the housing. These tips that uh, PPS uses, I try to probably use them 15, 20 times. You're going to see the pattern starts not looking as good, but inside needs to look similar to that. Once you break that apart, that comes off and your gun basically is clean. I sometimes hit this on the inside, a little bit of gun cleaner. I don't try to get too crazy with it. I could spend a little more time and have this gun looking a little better, but um, it's served me very well. They got these interchangeable tips. Uh, this particular one is a 1.3. They make them all the way to 2.0. I think 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. 1.5 and I think a 2.0. Don't hold me to that, but that's the ones I've kind of used. I'll use to clean that little tip out pretty good. Get back down that housing. But other than that, that's it. 
and the part that typically you would uh, spend a lot more time on on a regular paint gun is this right here and literally you're going to take this lid off and you're going to throw that away and you'll stick a new liner in for the next round that part there no more cleanup where you would have been cleaning that cup up on a regular paint gun hey welcome back to soda time restoration we're getting ready to do the take these leg levelers off obviously i'll be replacing these but i see a lot of people have struggles they tear them off if you get some that are locked on like really, really tight and you sprayed everything in the world on it, uh, believe you me, I've been there. I'm going to show you a couple little steps that I do to get these off. Make sure, probably the first step, if you get some that just come right out, that's great. This particular machine uh, wasn't too bad. It had been restored probably 20 years ago. We're going to stick some new leg levelers on this one, though. I like using the fluid film. If you get to a point where you need really good lubrication, that sprays in there. Really not a penetrant, but it works good. This has probably been the best one that I've used is this Aerocrol, uh, made by Kano. Not very cheap. Uh, it's probably a $20 can, probably only uh, uh, 10 ounces in there. So. I I use it very, very cautiously, but uh, get it on both sides of the thread. I've got a couple of them here that are locked up. After you get those threads, lubricate them really good. I, I treat them all after I get them out of there. Run a tap up through there. That uh, gets those threads back to where they need to be. Let's go to the next one here. These particular legs have no place to get a wrench on it, so you're gonna have to use probably a vice grip, but if you can get a hold of it with a vice grip or something, maybe even some water pump pliers, something like this, uh, something you get a hold of it, and if it's tight, start with doing just a, a back and forth like that, and don't try to just keep going. Just go back and forth, just bump it back and forth. Use your lubricant as you're going, but just bump that thing back and forth. As you see, it stops, but keep bumping it back and forth. That works that thread in there, starts cleaning it. As you see, it's getting a little bit easier. And then you'll feel a spot where it's gonna probably just open up for you and let you go. But if it ever stops, don't just try to keep going or you're gonna twist that thing right off. If that does happen, a couple of things you can do. Look like this one's gonna come all the way out. And as you can see the rust on there, those just get so rusted in there. This one here is, somebody screwed it all the way in very, pretty far in. I'm gonna do the same thing there. This one's got the same issue not wanting to go about that far. So just keep bumping it. Going back to if, if you do have an issue, I believe Funtronics and probably Soda Jerk Works, there's this insert you can get, you can knock, uh, knock those out, but you can get new ones of these. All right, let's go to this last one. And this one here, I've already checked. It's gonna be the one that we're gonna have to do a different process on. This is called a mini ductor. And what this does, it's gonna put electrical field all the way around that bolt and that head. So one thing I like about these mini ductors, no flame, uh, it's just direct heat, electrical heat. It will get this pretty glowing red. It will get it hot. So. We're gonna start out with probably, we're gonna do probably 30 seconds and uh, we'll go from there. So here we go. You just need to hold it around there. I already see a little bit of smoke coming off of it. All right, we're on, wasn't counting too well there since I was talking, but I close to 30 seconds there, I bet. There may be a set time to do that. But as you see, we've got some pretty good heat there. Be very cautious when you're working with this because it is going to be extremely hot right now. Same thing. Do not force this thing by any means. Just keep bumping it. 
and it's still pretty tight. Oop, I got a little bit of movement there. And sometimes if you get movement, it may be your bolt twisting off. So that's why I say just give it a bump. Do not be pushing anything. Don't know what arrow curl is going to do. We'll see if we get a little bit of flame here. We'll hit it for about another 15. And 15. I used to do this with flame, with a torch, a little propane torch. Uh, found this process. I've used it the last year. So far, I haven't broke anything off. Today might be my first day, we'll see. But I don't want to twist that off. We'll give it a little bit of heat here on the inside. A little tougher to get into. We're gonna change our adapters out. So you get some uh, different adapters like this that go into the, the mini ductor. I'm gonna bend these just a little bit since our bolt is down there like that. I'm gonna bend these straight up so I can get onto that housing. Watch your heat here. I would unplug it while you're doing that. It's already cooled off, not too bad, pretty quick. Uh, just got a couple of screws, pull them out, stick the other ones in. We're gonna get the inside here now. It'd help if I plug it in. <laughs> We did it for about 20 seconds. There's 25, it got pretty hot that time. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a tap. Be very patient with them. Okay, I'm starting to see the first motions of the bolt inside. So don't, if you're still just got a little bit of a bump going on, keep it going. Back and forward. It starts getting this kind of movement. Don't get, don't try to force it. Just keep bumping it. Hey. It's out. You know, it doesn't look any different than the other ones, but it would not move when we started. Probably couldn't have done it without the, the mini conductor. I've put a guide coat down, just a, a cheap aerosol flat black, just to kind of give me an idea of where I'm at. We're going to, uh, I'm gonna do this wet. You can do it wet or dry. I like doing it wet, it knocks down on dirt and dust but uh, i'm gonna do this one wet just to kind of go through the process i've got a sprayer i use uh, that you can you can use anything you can use if you want to use a bucket with some water it'll be fine but uh, we'll uh, do a little bit of work here what i've got is a soft pad uh, we're using 320 grit uh, a little soft pad. Uh, if you're looking for these, or it's a 770 35 37. Uh, your Nap Auto Parts store uh, should have that part number. It's a ball camp number. Rugo 320, wet and dry. You can do it either way. And if you keep it wet, you can run the run over it with a squeegee and really see how the finish is going to look pretty quickly, it'll dry it off really quick if you got a squeegee. All right, when we come back, we'll be jumping onto the door of the 56, uh, how to handle the lettering. Hey, thanks for staying with us this evening. Hit that subscribe button, throw me a comment, give me a thumbs up, 
but uh, hey, I appreciate everybody watching. Hopefully, uh, next is on this machine. Uh, we'll be putting the color down. So thanks a lot and catch you on the next one.